Hey, person two, Spotify Wrapped is out. You wanna look at it together? Oh <laughs> yeah, I've actually been curating my playlist all year long, so my top music won't be too embarrassing. <laughs> what do you mean? My top artist this year is Ukulele Banjo Boy. I streamed him for 2,003 minutes. Not too much time where it seems like I don't have a life, but not too little time to where it seems like I don't enjoy culture and art. Who was your top artist? <laughs> Um, mine was Taylor Swift. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, I went through that rough patch in January and streamed her for like 65,000 minutes. <laughs> you know, that's okay. Who were your other artists? Uh, yeah, it was Halsey, Ariana Grande, Billie Eilish. Halsey? Of Without Me Radio fame? You could probably get away with Ariana Grande depending on if you listen to her most popular songs. Her albums can be quite niche depending on the year. <laughs> What's wrong with her most popular song? But Billie Eilish? I mean, you can't post that anywhere. 16 year old white girls have a better music taste than you. Your top artists are starting to look like the top 40. I like the top 40. And what do white people have to do with this? Don't worry, we can fix this. I'm already curating you a playlist to fix your Spotify rap next year. Fix? Person two, does this make me basic? <laughs> oh, sweetie, you're just lucky you have me, the more interesting and unique character inserts. You'll be the coolest person by December. Behind me, of course. <laughs> I'm going to invent a new band to listen to. My idea is their songs won't have any lyrics to them, and the instrumentals will be just made of trash can lid noises and wild animal screeches. <laughs> Do baby already exist, though? So none of you think that I'm drinking on the job. If you ignore every alcohol that could be mixed with Coke. <laughs> I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. I'm also Shanspear. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shania, but I use the pen name Shanspear here on YouTube. My subscribers call me Shan. My family calls me Naya. My brain calls me mean things. I'm quite ungovernable in terms of identity. Anyways, <clears throat> it's nice to meet you. Ah, December. The temperature is 85 degrees. My cats won't stop eating the Christmas tree. And someone, somewhere, is doubled over in excruciating shame. Just how I like it. The first week of December usually marks the release of Spotify Wrapped, a yearly consumerist nightmare where Spotify clues you in on your most memorable listening habits of the past 12 months. It's something that should be met with excitement and curiosity. After all, it was you who listen to the window shut down noise for 10 hours a day, every day. You shouldn't be surprised, Brad. But lately, it's been met with more shame than enthusiasm. Before Spotify Wrapped comes out, y'all gotta realize I went through approximately 20 personality changes and am not responsible for whatever song I looped for seven hours. My Spotify Wrapped does not paint an accurate portrayal of me, so I will not be posting. Thank you for understanding. Don't ask me shit about my Spotify Wrapped. I don't know what happened this year. What? I know that ain't who I think it is. Yes, even me, the sexiest person alive, the one who is super unique, original, pretty, and funny, was anxious about showing my Spotify wrapped. But I knew I had to suck it up because you guys are so nice, so sweet, and so supportive that you couldn't possibly- What? Oh, I'm being dragged in my DMs right now? Violently? I honestly did not expect this. You are a 16 year old white girl is what I'm seeing. Praying for you. Hashtag basic baddie solidarity. The last one was said with love, so I appreciate that. And I'm not gonna lie, some of y'all are funny because I made a sarcastic post after this and I was like, fine guys, I'll just listen to whatever music you want me to listen to next year so my Spotify rap can be what you want it to be. And would you know someone sent me a recommendation list of music to listen to next year. <laughs> Do you want to die? So what's got everyone in a tizzy? 
What was so controversial on my Spotify wrapped that it warranted double digit DMs and a rehashing of the Oreo stereotype? <laughs> I listened to 3,002 minutes of Taylor Swift alone, and that placed me in the top 2% of her overall listeners of this year. I'm not gonna pretend that this is inaccurate, that I'm ashamed, that I demand a recount, that democracy in this country is going to shit. No, because I was there. <laughs> I witnessed myself listening to Taylor Swift for 3,000 minutes and I did it joyously. If anything, I'm surprised it wasn't more. <laughs> I'm surprised my 16,000 minute playtime wasn't just Taylor Swift. I demand a recount, stop the vote. The thing that actually took me by surprise was the response. The thinly veiled implication that I'm basic, that I'm juvenile, that there was something inherently wrong with my listening habits. It dredged up a feeling I can't quite describe. It's not anger or sadness or even shame. I'm honestly just confused. <laughs> I've never been called basic before. The Oreo thing, I mean, I grew up with interests drastically different from my siblings and their friends, so Oreo was forced into my vocabulary day one. But still, I really wanted to explore the concept of being basic and how it's usually weaponized, for lack of a better word, in a way that whoever says it feels more unique. In order to do that, we would need to travel all the way back to the tawdry time of 2009, back to the Joan jettification of Kristen Stewart, to the unholy year of the cardigan and scarves. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to bring some hardcore misogyny with us. If you're a black girl and your weave is red, green, purple, or blonde, use a basic bitch. If you're on a date with a man with no money and expect for hair man to pay for your food and one don't, use a basic bitch and you should have had a backup plan. In August of 2009, the comedian Lil Duval supposedly posted this video of himself standing on a toilet in front of his mother's shower curtain while single-handedly degrading every type of woman he could think of. At least the ones he doesn't want to fuck anyways. You the real bitch and I want your number along with your Skype so I can cyber fuck the shit out of you. Ew. Never mind. I mean, in two minutes, that's pretty impressive. There's a lot you can do in two minutes. You can make a hot pocket. You can compliment a stranger. You can call your mom and repeat everything you're saying in this video to her. I want to give a trigger warning for this audio that I'm going to play in this next clip. Um, it pertains to rape culture and victim blaming. You can skip to this time code I have on the screen if you would rather not hear it. If you and a man have all y'all clothes off and y'all about to have sex, you put your hands up and say stop, use a basic bitch and you already know what you were getting yourself into. 2009 was a crazy year. In the span between this 13 year old video and now, you probably became a different person. I genuinely hope so. But let's return to what I said at the beginning of this tangent. In August of 2009, the comedian Lil Duval supposedly posted this video of himself. Yeah. I said supposedly because that's not Lil Duval. That is an entirely different black person who goes by an entirely different name. And I'm emphasizing this mix up because Every single source I found on the origin of the basic bitch, from BuzzFeed to Wikipedia, cites this 2009 video as the coinage of the term and calls this man Lil Duval. Baby, that's Kiki Palmer. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe white people really do think all black people look the same, but the only 2009 YouTube video I can find even remotely related to Lil Duval about basic bitches is this one. I do notice that he had quite a history of using the term on Twitter, so maybe this creator was inspired or prompted by Lil Duval to make this video. The passage of time is unforgiving and the internet's not always up to date. So it's hard to tell who coined the term basic bitch. Was it Lil Duval or was it his evil twin who shaves? Lil Duval does have a song titled Basic, which was released on YouTube in January of 2010, where he raps, need to get your hair did, same wig for eight months. Why don't you just go and die? Do us all a favor. That doesn't even rhyme. The song is, of course, a joke. I can make a joke too, but it won't be funny. In fact, it might be morally unethical. Lil Duval follows this song up with a 2011 song titled Basic Bitch Interlude, where he confesses his love for basic bitches, sort of. He starts off by saying, I love basic bitches, but then pivots a little 
towards the end. I want a regular bitch that got a regular job, that do regular shit and sit her ass home. Regular bitches get married, basic bitches get shot, model chicks get fucked. Oh my god, corny, <laughs> lame, boo, tomato, 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 I'm throwing tomatoes. The term basic sans bitch has always existed as a descriptor. It usually just meant average, run of the mill, and simple. When it entered the lexicon in the late 2000s as an insult, however, the meaning took on a less general quality. It became a humorous critique against behavior and social class as well as a vehicle for misogyny. Hence the bitch part of basic bitch. Lil Duval speaks about women who sleep on mattresses on the floor, who have coach bags with broken straps, who wear knockoff brands and fake fur. Spoken Reasons, the one everyone is misidentifying as Lil Duval, mainly focuses on the habits of certain women, especially their sexual lifestyles, while also sexualizing the women he finds valid so do you want women to have sex or not and both of them have way too much fun using the phrase as a way to dehumanize or imply violence against women if you walk like a bitch talk like a bitch and get mad when somebody call you a bitch you the basic bitch the term began to evolve in the late 2010s and onward it became less about social class though that still had its influence and more about originality and personality. And the shift in meaning pretty much defines basicness today. Charlotte Alter describes basic bitches as always on trend, which really should be read as never stepping outside the box. Their chemical makeup consists of pumpkin spice lattes, Coachella, Taylor Swift, scented candles, and conventional drinks like lattes and Diet Coke. What's a conventional drink, you ask? I think the more apt question is, what the fuck is an unconventional drink? <laughs> basic bitches just love following the crowd and drinking water. Basic bitches be drinking refreshing beverages. <laughs> Couldn't be me. I drink battery acid infused with Piggly Wiggly brand, Dr. Pepper. Mr. Pig for all of you uncultured swine. The basic bitch is also almost always white, which is interesting considering her origins within the black community. Evolution is a crazy thing. And she is almost always a she. Most of this video will speak in rigid binaries because of this, but it's a term that can be acted against almost anyone. Otherwise, we tend to consider the guy equivalent of the basic bitch as bros or jocks if we're still stuck in the 2000s. And for all of us basic NBs, I think our stereotype would just be NPCs. <laughs> in short, the basic bitch is slang for average woman. A woman who does not excite, stimulate, or surprise. She runs her gel manicured hands up and down the spine of female-centric popular culture of the last 15 years and is satisfied with what she feels. She doesn't, apparently, long for more. I've noticed throughout my research that the basic bitch is a heavily contradictory stereotype. It's at once encouraged to be average within society, to fit in, to not color too far out of the lines, lest you be bullied relentlessly when you're 14 years old in a new town. And all you want is a friend to spend time with, yet you get picked on daily for your clothes and your hair and your music and your loneliness. And there was that one time you got called a bitch in the middle of a crowded lunchroom just because you dared to stand up for yourself and everyone at the lunch table laughed. Which, wow, you didn't realize you still carried that weight until now. What was I talking about again? Despite being encouraged and strictly enforced, the basic bitch is simultaneously degraded. Charlotte Alter bemoans the lack of self-awareness basic bitches have. They seem to even lack the self-awareness necessary to understand just how hated they are. That is the thing with you plastics. You think that everybody is in love with you when actually everybody hates you. To be called basic implies that you have made a gross miscalculation of your own specialness. That in fact, you are not a twinkly snowflake and your boringness is obvious to everyone. In a social media climate that is all about self-branding and distinction, there's a particular humiliation in being indistinguishable. It's pathetic. Our hatred for the basic bitch is quite flat when we really challenge it. We say we hate them not only because they're boring, but because they dare not to be different from everyone else. But this is quite unfair. Because of the versatility of the human race, I don't really think basic people exist, at least not in the way the basic bitch implies. Try as we might, I think it's quite hard to be exact clones of one another. Even the plastics who Alter considers the originator of the basic bitch, which is not true. Even the plastics in their identical cookie cutter mean girl personas vary from person to person. And I think this is true for most people, 
even the most basic. When I was 14, I moved to the smallest town on planet Earth. I was knee deep in my in-log phase. I listened to music that I thought was different and unique. And I shit on everyone who I saw as part of the mainstream. Something you may not know about small towns in the South, everyone is the same or so i thought all the boys drive their muddy pickup trucks to school stomp around through the hallways in their fucking steel-toed boots wear that ridiculous salt life logo on absolutely everything and the girls all don simply southern merchandise everyone's blonde haired and blue eyed and they all listen to the country top 40. oh high school was a playground for my unique snowflake ass but the thing about people is they really do surprise you, even the ones you have mistakenly written off as flat. Despite their similar tastes, I don't think I met a single person in that town who was identical to the next. Even in a town where camouflage was the pillar of fashion, a girl showed up in a custom camo prom dress and still stood out <laughs> because E cats. There's ways to do something that everyone else is doing and do it your own way. We talk more about this in my originality video, but the point is it's nearly impossible to be an exact carbon copy of someone else, unless you possess their body. And even then there might be something really off about them. <laughs> I'm Sigmund Freud and Chance Fear dug me up to guest star on this week's episode. I think a more plausible reason for why we hate the basic bitch, at least in one aspect, is because she exists on the plane of being wrongly influenced. She follows all of the latest trends, she finds joy in the top 40, she buys things that are advertised to her and doesn't challenge the things that she consumes. It's not her consumption in the first place that makes her problematic, it's what she chooses to consume. This was a brilliant point made by Noreen Malone in that it explains why the basic bitches defined only by the intersection of her behaviors and consumption patterns. And it explains why there seems to be such a dichotomy between the basic bitch and those who consume more valid products. You're choosing to spend your money on cheap coach bags, fake fur, and bogus brands. Or you wear popular mainstream fashion just like everyone else. You're not necessarily wrong. Your consumption habits are. That's why the Spotify Wrapped is such a good example. It's not that I listen to music in general or participate in Spotify Wrapped that makes me basic. It's that when I do, I do it with the wrong artists. This implies that there's a right way to have interests. Spoiler, there's not. But the foil character to the basic bitch would obviously have to be the right choice when it comes to consuming media because we hate the basic bitch's diet coke guts and need a replacement as Lil Duval so charmingly put it. The opposite of the basic bitch would be the unique, exemplary, original bitch. <clears throat> Someone who rejects the top 40, actively avoids trends, and only to find themselves by how unique they think they are. This is so much healthier, by the way. Trust me. Originality is something that's been long since cherished in our society. Not too much originality or you'll scare the hoes, but just enough for others to remain comfortable and unthreatened. To be unique, to consume things differently than the mainstream, there's this implication that you challenge your habits, or at least yourself, more than the average consumer. You appear to not be as easily influenced by outside forces than you are by your own wants and desires. Under the right circumstances, this can be ideal and foster a healthy relationship with self-expression. Under evil circumstances, however, a media elitist is born. <laughs> there are certain people who can only understand their personhood in relation to how different they think they are. They don't just like this niche thing, they want you to feel bad about not liking this niche thing, but then they're going to gatekeep the niche thing and then not tell you what the niche thing is because if you like it, doesn't make them feel special anymore. They don't participate in trends or even give popular things a chance because they think it's beneath them. They're not a person who happens to like different things, they're different period. The question is, is this understanding of self more practical than the basic bitch? Before we go any further, we must get more acquainted with nuance. I'm speaking about 
people who define themselves by their difference, not because I think it's a large portion of people who likes things outside of the mainstream or because I think everyone who likes things outside of the mainstream are just pretentious or they want to be different. I mention them because I used to be <laughs> one of those people when I was a teenager. I think it fits into this conversation because there are small groups of people who do still think this way about their interests and their hobbies and they do sort of feel superior to people who don't have those same niche hobbies the people in my dms for instance i also want to like emphasize that i don't think this is particularly a conversation about like in logs like not like other girls i would think that this conversation is more about media elitism or you can even say pretentiousness i would stick with just media elitism where you feel like your media consumption habits are superior to other people for whatever reason and that can be done by anyone not just women but this is a conversation that can't be discussed in shades of gray and candlelight what we've discussed in past videos how the ultra feminine are ridiculed both in the media and by society however it would be naive to assume that people deemed different are treated any better because we're not regardless of the basic bitch stereotype the mainstream is the most accepted culture in society while those who stray too far outside of it often refer to subcultures or even counter cultures are ostracized or at the very least looked down upon for their assumed deviation from the norm from the the norm being bullied for listening to different music or dressing different than your peers is not an uncommon experience, especially when you're younger. It's one of the many reasons why so many people have a fear of stepping outside of the mainstream in the first place. In that case, Spotify rap day may very well look like this. Oh yeah, that's so cool. Mine was Ukulele Banjo Boy. I love how dichotomous his music is. You know, like happy lyrics with sad beats, sad lyrics with happy beats. First of all, ew. Ukulele Screamo is so 2015. Second of all, you're way too different. I will proceed to make your life a living hell for as long as I'm in it, make you feel shame for having normal interests, and possibly cause irreparable damage to your psyche and or physical form. Thanks. You're welcome. A lot of toe submissions rightfully explain that they felt burned by mainstream things simply because they were always made fun of for innocently not liking them in the first place. And then you have the people who are deemed too different in other areas of life outside of mere hobbies, people who are systematically oppressed or otherwise belittled for their existence. Neurodivergent people, people of color, queer people, gender non-conforming people, trans people, fat people, disabled people, the list goes on. It's not possible to discuss the brilliance of uniqueness and not talk about how being seen as too different can also come with rejection, oppression, or even death. The point of this video is not to talk of people who form genuine interests in whatever niche they feel fulfilled by while respecting those different from them, but about those who participate in a performance of interests and a rejection slash belittlement of things they view as other. So a basic person who only likes mainstream things because they think it makes them more accepted while denigrating other subcultures or countercultures. Or people from subcultures who avoid anything that's too popular or basic because it makes them feel cooler to do so while patronizing people who find genuine joy in the mainstream. Both sides are equally unbalanced, feeding off of artificial interests to further their own self-image. They both also ignore the importance of broader communities and an open mind. One toe emailer states, being basic seems to be a very Western concept. It centers the idea of being so individualistic that you share nothing in common with anybody around you. I think it is sad to feel like it is a bad thing to share something with another person, but also a bit delusional to think you are raised in a society slash nation slash culture as someone else and think you won't have unconscious influence in your interests and unexamined biases slash preferences planted by the environment, socio-political atmosphere you grew up in. Oh my god, my brain is short-circuiting. Did you go to Harvard, bestie? <laughs>
joking. Another subscriber made an excellent point. Y'all were really showing out for this last newsletter of the year, weren't y'all? Exams ain't kicking y'all ass enough. But that subscriber states, ultimately it revolves back around to the paradox of authenticity. The more you try to perform authenticity, the less authentic your performance is. And true displays of authenticity are usually more boring than most people would expect. Sometimes you do just like Taylor Swift. <laughs> There's a reason why popular things are popular. There's something quite likable or enjoyable about them. We're all human and share the same human experiences, needs, etc. So most people are just going to be average most of the time. That's not necessarily conformity, that's just statistics. People just happen to like things that they like and they give weight to whatever matters to them. To flatten that experience, as one subscriber describes it as, is just ignorant. Denying yourself access to something that could otherwise fulfill or engage you whether that be something that's already popular or something more undiscovered, just because you're afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone or your image is kind of depressing. And it's something that I try to embrace as I get older, finding new interests that younger me sort of deprive myself of because I was too caught up in looking cool. And so now I try not to pride myself on being different, just as I don't pride myself on being into mainstream things. When I listen to Taylor Swift, I don't do it because my friends do. Most of my friends do not actually, in fact, listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I listen to her because I think she has a brilliant way of broadening personal experience. She takes her own life moments and makes them wide enough to fit my own. And to think that I could have lived my whole life never hearing the Reputation album, never singing along to Cowboy Like Me, Dear John, I Know Places, Clean, You Are In Love, are you fucking for real right now? <laughs> it feels silly to end the video by saying, let people enjoy things. It's a lot more complicated than that in certain areas of life where people are routinely persecuted for being deemed too different. But when it comes to something as simple as music taste, sometimes that really is the answer. You're not a special snowflake no matter what you like, and you're not a better person because you keep up with Kardashians. <laughs> Essentializing it may make you feel better for the time being, but it also just feels good to realize that you are a person who likes things and nothing is being asked of you and your interests. Hey, Spotify rap just came out. Liking one thing doesn't mean it has to define you. You can be as contradictory, complex, or as average as you want. All that's being asked of you is to exist. The crime of being basic, the illusion of being unique. That's Shanspear 22, and that's a wrap. If you don't like the word bitch, you are not gonna like this video. <laughs> oh God, oh shit. God damn. I think this Coke is like, making my throat raw as hell. I can't even talk right now. <laughs> God, this is fucking drying my throat out. God damn.